All right, this is second step lesson number 10. Today we're going to be talking about the effects of sexual harassment. Okay, in this lesson we'll learn how sexual harassment affects the people who experience it and talk about where to go to get support for it. So sexual harassment statistics. Five out of every 10 students, no matter their gender or sexual orientation, is who experiences sexual harassment. Four out of every 10 boys, six out of every 10 girls, eight out of every 10 LGBTQ students. So gender doesn't matter. Sexual harassment can happen to anyone. And do these uh, statistics surprise you? Let me just get that out. Statistics surprise you. Why or why not? Answer that now. Again, sexual harassment is when someone bothers someone else with words, actions, or pictures of a sexual nature. What are the effects of sexual harassment? Nine out of 10 people who experienced sexual harassment said it had a significant effect on them. Some of the short-term effects include trouble sleeping, missing school, stomach pain, drop in performance, and lowered self-esteem. Some of the long-term effects of sexual harassment include, get my face out of the way, high blood pressure, risk of heart disease, risk of depression and anxiety, and eating disorders. So sexual harassment is not harmless. There are effects to it that can really impact someone's life if we don't deal with it and we don't Make sure that we are checking in on these people, helping them process what happened, and making sure it definitely does not happen further. So I'm going to watch a video quickly here. Um, so I did water polo when I was, like, for a couple of years. Um, I just recently stopped, like, a couple months ago. But... Um, the team was made of like 15 boys and two girls and uh they kept like it, i mean all of the guys were like "Ooh, there's the girl in a swimsuit you know like that's kind of why i quit one of my friends um she's pretty uncomfortable um just with people uh talking about you know they're being attracted to her or that kind of thing but this person kept uh sexually harassing her online and this and other people started to catch on she felt really, really uncomfortable about it, and it, it carried over not just online, but just in person. She became much more quiet and just more generally uncomfortable with everybody. So there was this girl, and she was dating this boy, but I don't know if she knew, but this boy was, he was a really bad guy, and he used to talk about her behind her back, and he exposed her on social media doing provocative things, and she was very sad about it and they used to call her names on social media and I don't think she could take it. She transferred schools. I don't know what happened to her. So the effects of sexual harassment, what effects of sexual harassment do the students in the video talk about? I want you to take a second and think about that and put some of those down. What what effects did some of the students in the video talk about? Reporting sexual harassment. Only one, one in 10 students who experienced sexual harassment report it to an adult at school. One out of 10. Why do you think that is? Why does no one report it? Who can you report it to? You can report harassment to any staff member at school. So at school, you can report it to a counselor, a teacher, an administrator, a school compliance officer, or SRO, SRO Officer Minkowski. Okay, the District Equity and Civil Rights Office. So basically, the number one people to go to is who are the adults in the building that you feel the most comfortable with, that you interact with, on a daily basis okay hopefully most of you can say 
I could be a person that you could come to, even if you're not on Synergy. But there should be somebody in your day that you feel like you could talk to or say, hey, this is happening to me. Can you help? It doesn't mean you have to get involved in the whole situation. You can just explain this is happening to me. What can we do to fix it? And you don't have to be embarrassed or feel bad about reporting something that makes you feel uncomfortable. We want you to be comfortable at school and we want you to want to come every day. Okay, if something like this was happening to me, I would probably want to avoid it and not want to come to school. So we want to get past that. We want to make sure we report it, make sure we deal with it, make sure that we don't let it continue to happen. If school isn't the place and you're feeling, you know what, I don't know about that. So how, where can I report this outside of school? Who can help me there? Well, obviously your parents or caregivers or in another adult you trust. Maybe you have a coach for a team that you're involved with, but definitely you need to tell someone. So who are some adults at school you'd feel comfortable going to for support if you experience or witness sexual harassment? So again, going to an adult, not only if you are the person being sexually harassed, but maybe if you saw someone else doing something, you're like, you know what? I think that was kind of inappropriate. Even if you're not totally sure if it's sexual harassment or not, you can still report it and we can have a conversation with you and that student and then figure out what's going on and make sure that we're all clear that, you know, sexual harassment is not acceptable and that there will be consequences if things like that continue. So think about it for a second and then answer, like, is there any adults at school you'd feel comfortable going to for support 